Okay, welcome everybody to the Drupal Jam and our talk about digital accessibility and uh, automatic testing. I am uh, Jelitan, consultant, digital accessibility and also a project manager working by uh, Findlist. I'm here today with my uh, colleague uh, Wouter, senior Drupal developer. Well, um, you can find our biography on uh, on LinkedIn as well on uh, on our blog uh, site. You could read our uh, newspapers and uh, blogs, etc., which we uh, published the last few months. If you have some action, uh, uh, questions, uh, I would uh, suggest to uh, write them in the chat so we could uh, answer it after our session, after our talk. Well, let's start. Um, maybe you are, you are aware of it, but um, in order of uh, the United Nations and the European Union, the Dutch government um, agreed in 2060 that all government agencies should meet to uh, the WECA criteria. It means uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And is meant for uh, government agencies like local government, uh, tender parties, educational institutes, and uh, water boards, etc. Well, you can imagine that the impact of it would be enormous uh, for the government agencies and uh, their digital channels. But be also aware that the set sense of necessity uh, of uh, uh, accessible channels is increasing. So, from my opinion, it's time to do something. And that's the reason why are we here and uh, because of the impact of the digital channels. And uh, Wouter and I will, uh, will share our knowledge about uh, this topic. So, we are going to talk about, uh, first of all, about some facts regarding accessibility. And the second point is I want to share some best practices regarding uh, you know, how to uh, implement uh, the accessibility in your organization and uh, share some uh, tips and tricks with you. Well, let's start first of all with the timeline of W3C, uh, of accessibility. Well, it's uh, introduced in 1999 by uh, W3C uh, with the first uh, model, guideline model. And uh, during the few years, it continuously updated by newer versions. Finally, in 2018, uh, uh, W3C uh, updated, uh, uh, wake up with uh, the newest model uh, 2.1, which is compatible with mobile devices. And also in, uh, in 2018, the Dutch government has agreed, uh, has agreed to that uh, uh, accessibility uh, to introduce by, their all, by all their uh, government agencies. Uh, that means that they uh, should comply to uh, accessibility statements and accessibility guidelines on 23 September 2020. And therefore, they need to, uh, first of all, they need to uh, publish uh, an accessibility statement on uh, uh, their website and, uh, uh, and, this, uh, and the corporate website of uh, the government of Lokis. Well, what is Wake Up about? First of all, Wake Up about exists of uh, four principles. Uh, and within the principles that we know uh, that there are two uh, three uh, different levels uh, of, of complexity and all of these levels uh, level a aa and triple a uh, consist of uh, totally 78 criteria within it the first level uh, the first principle uh, is perceivable uh, the second is operable Third is understandable, and the last one is robust. And uh, when I'm talking about perceivable, I mean that uh, to measure measures that uh, could be taken by the user to make information perceptible, like uh, changing font size or 
uh, a contrast or uh, activating uh, or disabling the speed reader. Uh, by uh, by operable, I, I'm talking about you, uh, that the user could uh, control the user interface with various devices. And the third one, uh, understandable, is mean about information that must easy to be understand. And the last one is uh, platforms uh, that could be used, uh, uh, channels that could be used by uh, different platforms. Well. And now, uh, uh, the last few months, I did some research by uh, uh, government agencies like uh, local government and uh, college, uh, because uh, first of all, I'm interested in uh, this topic, uh, how far they are, what they did, what are they doing, uh, uh, if I could help them in being accessible, etc. And uh, I show you here in this slide. Uh, uh, on the right side, my infographic, which is also published on uh, on our blog side, and on the uh, left side, you, sh you see also some facts. And one of the facts is that more than seventy percent of uh, uh, local government websites uh, still does not meet uh, to the agreements. Uh, that means that two more than two hundred fifty uh, local governments do not comply to wake up criteria. Uh, 65 of them are a Drupal, uh, uh, 65 of them are uh, local governments who use Drupal as corporate websites. So logically there are uh, enough potential uh, corporate or, uh, uh, government or organizations we uh, could help to be accessible. And also 75% of local government websites aren't busy with doing a scans or audit. And the reason for that is that they, that this topic is very complex. I will explain you in uh, uh, the, uh, some uh, in other slides. Well, the results of uh, my, my uh, research by a college is that 15% uh, uh, of the college are uh, familiar with accessibility and uh, are now busy with this topic. And, uh, 5% of them uh, has accessibility statements. There's, um, there's not a lot. There are uh, a lot of organizations who should, uh, uh, has to do some work. Well, I showed you in my infographic that many of the local government agencies uh, aren't still busy with this uh, topic because of the complexity. Well, the complexity is uh, comes uh, it's about, uh, not about the technology, but more about how uh, you should handle it. Well, accessibility is more about the technology. It's important to realize for whom you're doing this, uh, why you do this, uh, uh, what the impact is on your organizational level, uh, the, the architecture. And my advice is, is to you to, to split uh, it to uh, three uh, stages. Uh, first of all, start with creating your awareness in your organization. Uh, second is, once you've done that, uh, second is then uh, make your additional channels accessible. Uh, the last one is uh, stay accessible. Well, how to create awareness in your organization. Once you start with uh, creating awareness, uh, my, suggest my suggestion is to start with determine uh, all of your sites, uh, like, like corporate website, uh, uh, electronic education platforms, uh, intranets, etc. It will help you to, to get insight and think about uh, your life cycle, the, the architecture relations, uh, ownership, uh, investments you want to do, uh, a management uh, organization. Well, put this information all together and uh, share it with your management. Uh, and, 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 uh, and be aware that they also involve in this uh, topic. Well, you can handle uh, all this information, bring it together in an impact sheet, uh, which, you sh which you see here on your right hand. Uh, you can prioritize all uh, your websites on impact and uh, set it up in, a tight, in time. 
once you've done that, put it all in your business plan and make an, a business case and make a plan which you can which you could use by making your digital channels accessible. Well, first of all, you need to start with uh, once you want to start with uh, making your channels accessible, you need to start with publish uh, an accessibility statement based on uh, the model of uh, Binlandse Zaken. I will uh, share uh, in one of my last slides the link uh, uh, to the format you could use. And I will uh, uh, show you an, uh, an, an statement or which is correct and which not. Well, once you, meanwhile, you could also start with uh, scanning your website and um, uh, and content on accessibility uh, criteria of WECA. Um, I, I made there my own plan for it's uh, it's set up in four stages. First of all, is uh, first is uh, get on dialogue with your customer and uh, yeah, get information about uh, their purpose. Uh, what their goal is regarding uh, getting the accessible is that only changing the user interface or do they really want to help uh, persons with disabilities disabilities and uh, once you agreed that uh, that you uh, that the customer wants to do something with accessibility you could start with doing a scan uh, a manually scan uh, um, or based on the evaluation methodology uh, and the wake up criteria, uh, the 50 uh, criteria, which I talked about earlier about. This will give you uh, information in, about the findings in, um, on, on the web page. Uh, you will uh, notice all these findings in an advisory, advisory report uh, uh, based on an evaluation methodology template which the customer could use to uh, uh, for for uh, uh, the state accessibility statement. And once uh, the customer made a plan uh, together with you uh, about how to handle and uh, which uh, and, and about the priority, you could you could solve uh, all these uh, uh, findings. And once you solve it. Uh, the last step is to do an, uh, a formal uh, WECA audit. Uh, don't forget also to to train to uh, to train your editors, uh, because uh, the content you will post in the future must also be uh, accessible. Uh, well, here's an example of. Uh, uh, um, an, an accessibility statement on the right side is the, is the one that uh, uh, based on the model of uh, Ben Lanza Zaken and on the uh, uh, right side, uh, uh, left side, you see a model which is uh, made by themselves. Um, well, I'm scrolling here with my mouse, and I'm going here with my mouse over. Uh, um, I hope you see it. On the right side, uh, you see here a link to www.aanhunze.nl. Well, uh, you see here the link to, uh, it is a link to uh, the accessibility findings report. Uh, uh, here you see the, 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 uh, the date of publishing, uh, what type of research it is. Uh, it's manual research. Uh, it's one of the, uh, they must do a manual research uh, uh, what well, is one of the requirements. Uh, also on step three and four, you find some um, the, uh, the scan findings and uh, the date way they want to uh, solve it. Well, on the left side, the thing what I see, what, what uh, the minimal requirement is, is only the date of publishing. Uh, and further, I see not relevant information. One of the things that, that minimally must be published on on an accessibility statement is uh, what the findings are, when they want to solve it, uh, when it's published, um, what is the vision regarding uh, uh, accessibility, uh, what are the total findings, the report, and what type of uh, uh, scan uh, they did. 
because uh, a scan with an, a tool is not enough. The tools of now uh, does uh, give you insights of 20% of accessibility. Therefore, you need to do an, uh, a scan, a manual scan. Well, the third uh, stage of uh, my uh, my plan uh, is, is uh, keep being accessible, how to do that and what to do there for. Don't forget to update your accessibility statement once a year uh, with all of your changes. And, uh, make WCAG criteria as a part of your definition of time, your development process. And uh, you should do every three years a formal audit. To show that you are uh, uh, that your website is proven on accessibility. And my uh, last slide is about uh, some tips and tricks or tools which I use. Well, uh, here you see uh, an accessibility statement wizard. The link to it. It's a uh, formal uh, uh, wizard of Logius. Uh, you could use to create an accessibility statement. Well, it's not easy to do it. You have to have, uh, you need to have some uh, knowledge about it. But once you do it, uh, you can do the second one also. Otherwise, I could uh, help you. Uh, Drupal is also known with uh, familiar with uh, Weka. Uh, uh, it uses uh, the hashtag shown there, uh, shown in my slide for modules and teams. Uh, don't forget to do to use descriptions uh, for hyperlinks and non-decorative uh, images. Uh, for example, if a visitor with uh, poor vision uh, uh, visits your site and uh, is uh, the speak reader comes uh, sees an, an link, it will read the complete complete link instead of reading uh, the purpose of that link. Uh, don't open uh, links in new uh, tab or windows. Uh, and also I have to, uh, uh, the last tip is uh, to use sufficient uh, color contrast. Uh, many visitors are uh, color blindless. And here are some uh, four tools which I use uh, by my scans. Uh, first is web developer extensions of Chrome. Uh, it adds uh, various web dev tools to my browser. Uh, and also to your browser. <laughs> uh, I use also color contrast analyzer uh, and uh, ox and site improve for uh, automatic uh, skins. Well, I uh, thank you for listening uh, to my talk and want to ask Wouter to uh, share his knowledge about uh, automatic <coughs> testing. Yes, if you could uh, close the screen, yes. Uh, here we go. Uh, yes. Okay, I'll uh, talk a bit about why automated testing is a good idea. And I'll briefly show you some browser extensions and standalone tools which are available for you. Maybe uh, Salil can turn off his mic, that would be nice. Um, and I'll be looking at some tools you can incorporate in your dev stack. And lastly, we'll be looking at some monitoring tools to make sure when development is done, things stay okay. So why would you want to have uh, automated testing? As you heard earlier in this session by uh, Salil, making sure your projects are accessible to people who are less able is now more important than ever with laws and stuff. Automated testing early in the development process is essential to ensure this is the case. Unfortunately, automated testing is not the holy grail and it's by no means a substitute for human testing. There are things uh, automated tests just don't pick up. You can only test about 20 to 30 uh, percent of the guidelines with uh, automated tests. So what are some examples uh, of things we can't test with uh, automated testing? Well, for instance, uh, keyboard-only navigation is very hard to test uh, automatically. Uh, forms that are inaccessible, mouse-only interaction, that's all stuff you can't catch with uh, automated tests. Keyboard traps, where, where you can't move your keyboard focus from an element. 
uh, tab order. You can uh, uh, change the order of stuff around with CSS and automated tests uh, can catch that contrast. Although uh, you can catch some contrast issues. It won't work with uh, background images or transparency, for instance. It's really hard to catch, so you have to check that manually. The readability of the text. Uh, meaning, uh, is it simple enough to understand by people? It's not easy to do to catch automatically. Uh, what a screen reader reads is hard to uh, reproduce with an automated test. What happens when you zoom in is almost impossible to catch with uh, automated tests and the visibility of focus elements and interaction issues. It's hard to check interaction issues with uh, video players, forms stuff like that so what can we test uh, the correct use of heading in this html structure some contrast issues uh, the correct use of html and aria attributes like titles uh, autocomplete stuff headers in tables uh, alt text in links of in images titles in links stuff like that the uniqueness of ids if there's a skip link available and if it's the first link on the page, all stuff we can test uh, automatically. It's pretty annoying to test manually, so that's great. Uh, probably the easiest uh, way to quickly check the validity of a page is to use a browser extension. And we'll have a quick look at some of them. First up uh, is WAVE, the Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. Great word. Uh, it's a tool from WebAIM, which is a nonprofit organization in the, uh, from the University of Utah. They provide uh, some tools and training to make the web more accessible. Wave is a pretty cool uh, extension. You can right click anywhere on your page to activate it, and it shows you an on screen indicator, so it's immediately clear where the issue is. It gives a clear description uh, and a short explanation, and a link to a more extensive explanation of the issue. Uh, you're looking at you can see it on the screen there's also some instructions to uh, how to fix the issue it's available for firefox and chrome oh, it's pretty cool next up is x it's an ex extension by dq which is an american company uh, specialized in accessibility they provide audits training and tools and they are uh, really the industry leaders we'll see x uh, application a couple more times in this uh, presentation uh, in this uh, incarnation, uh, we can find it in our inspector, where you can uh, analyze a page by clicking a button, and X will present you uh, with a list of violations. If you click one, it displays a summary containing the X path of the element. You can see it on screen now, uh, the source and the possible solution to the problem. You can uh, view the offending elements in the inspector or highlight it on screen. It provides you with a link to the DQ uh, University where you can learn more about the violation. X is based on a Node.js library with the same name. We'll uh, come back to that later. And it's available for Firefox, Chrome, and Edge. Well, uh, there's also, of course, the Firefox inspector. This is a bit more developer-centric. You can generate a list of errors of, of errors or see all the elements at once. And when you click one, there's a link to the uh, Mozilla Developer Network websites, giving you a, a more explanation of, a, of the issue you ran into. Um, also, Chrome, it has uh, fairly similar options in the inspector, but it also has uh, Lighthouse. And Lighthouse is a complete audit tool where you can get a report on performance, some best practices, CEO, and also accessibility. It makes it somewhat limited when it comes to accessibility, but for a quick evaluation of your page, it's great. Uh, you also have the inspector, uh, which is a normal part of uh, Chrome, and uh, it's, it's similar to its uh, Firefox counterpart, so they complement each other. You should use both of them if you're a Chrome user. Next up, from the Pali project, there's this uh, desktop application called Koali. Pali is an open source Node.js uh, module. 
and we'll see you Pally later on in this presentation as well. Uh, it's a desktop uh, application, so the entry barrier is very low, which is great for managers. And also great for managers is it uh, creates reports in various formats, formats, and it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So pretty cool application, if you ask me. Next up, tools you can use in your dev stack. We'll focus on two Node.js applications, first of which is X, XCLI. Uh, part of the X suite of applications of the DQ organization, we've uh, talked about it before. It's a Node.js application. So you can uh, incorporate it in your dev stack. You can run a test manually, add it to your deploy hook or use it with a task runner like Gulp or Grunt or Yarn. And by default, it starts up a browser, and you can, it, it, by default, it uses Chrome, but you can use different browsers uh, using WebDriver. It's also possible to use X in your uh, continuous integration setup by having it exit with a code one. And if you like, it's possible to incorporate X in your Nightwatch.js uh, tests, which is a cool uh, option, if you ask me. Oh, and now I just click the wrong button. So we'll go back. already showed you this. There we go. The other Node.js application I'd like to shortly talk about is Pally and Pally CI. Pally is also a Node.js application. It's used in the Koali application we talked about earlier. And Pally is a Node.js app too. It uses uh, different parsers. Uh, you can use X or for instance, uh, you can use Code Sniffer or both. Pally has actions, which is pretty cool. I have to speed up a bit because uh, it's a little, a little bit too long. So hurrying up. Uh, it has actions, so you can, for instance, click a link or uh, wait for elements to change state or check a checkbox. Uh, as with XCLI, you can use it with task runners. There's also a separate module specifically designed for use with continuous integration setups. So you can parse a sitemap run multiple instances to speed up your tests. And it's also possible to set a threshold before throwing an error and canceling your build. Okay, we've come to the final part. Uh, when you're done uh, developing the project, of course, everything is well, but the site gets handed off to the editors. And we all know what happens then. They introduce new kinds of issues. So it would be nice to monitor the accessibility of your site. And I'll show you two applications that can do just that. Once again, we're starting off with X. They also provide a service to monitor your website, which is a commercial uh, service. So there's a, a, a small cost or a large cost, I'm not sure. Uh, it also uses the X library, so you know what you're uh, uh, working with. And you can use it periodically to crawl your complete site. There's some basic scripting, for instance, to bypass uh, user authentication. It gives you a nice dashboard and reporting for your manager. To, uh, to report, because that's what reports do. And lastly, uh, I, we've already talked about Pally, but they also have a monitoring tool called Pally Dashboard, which is a free open source application built on Node.js and MongoDB. It's real easy to set up. It's easy to customize. You can just tweak a, a template or use a web service to build your own app or incorporate it in Drupal or whatever. Unfortunately, there's no crawling, but you could build something to do. So it's not really a problem if you ask me. It's a pretty cool uh, application. Well, I think I managed to, yeah, just in time, we come to the end. Uh, I wrote some articles uh, about the subject on uh, on our blog. And on DrupalCon, I'll be diving a little bit deeper with perhaps some demos. And, well, that was it. Thanks. Okay, now I have to switch. Yes. I'll close this up. Any questions? You have about half a minute to ask a question. <laughs> well, thank you for joining no this uh, this talk about uh, accessibility. Uh, when you, if you have questions, don't uh, be shy to uh, to sh to uh, send a mail to us or visit uh, our the website, the finalist. 
or uh, digitaltoegankelijk.com. Yeah, you can also send us a message on LinkedIn or, or anywhere. I think you are. We'll also provide a link to the slides. Yes. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed.